So what we're saying is that there should be some way. I mean, because you can't, in a case like this 19, this, this, uh, this particular global meltdown, um, sometimes companies have just gone bankrupt. Mm -hmm. And so there has to be some way that, that the government, it would mean the government, it would mean that the federal government could actually do the federal regulated bodies and the provinces could do it for the provincial regulated bodies. But what could happen is that the two could come together and create a national pension insurance fund protect that if it happens. Things have really changed for women since we've, uh, since more and more women have gone out into the workforce and we're finding that while uh, maybe 15 to 20 years ago fewer women got CPP because they did not do any, in, went in the paid workforce, they stayed at home and they looked after the children, they looked after the family, um, which incidentally is work that's valuable and mm -hmm. has never been valued. And you know that's my hobby horse. I believe we need to value the unpaid work that people do looking after children and the elderly, etc. But more and more women are going out, so we find that more and more women are getting CPP so that when they retire, they not only depend on OAS and, and, and or GIS, but they actually have a little bit of CPP of their own from their work. But it's never, even if they've worked all their lives, it's never the same amount as men. So did you want to talk about why that is so? Well, you know, I find it odd that you raise that issue, but I have to say, uh, I have been in, in political life now 22 years. Prior to that, I was um, at home, raising my family, helping my husband in his small business. Uh, my Canada pension plan would still not be equivalent to what my husband is. And, that, and I've worked for 22 years in reasonably decent paying jobs. I still can't catch up to what my husband has because he's worked his lifetime. Yeah. And, and so that is the other reason that women are always going to be behind because women are the ones who have the children. Women are responsible for taking care of the, the children and then the parents. and all of the additional pressures uh, that are there, which make it harder. So going on to your particular issue about how do we, how do we recognize um, unpaid work, I think it's somewhere where we need to use the systems of government to recognize that in a different way, in a monetary way. Yes. Women should be able to contribute to their Canada Pension Plan and should be somehow recognized for that period of time that they stay home. It's not a question of giving women a hundred dollars a child and they're going to stay home they're not able to I don't contribute. know what dollars a child does in today's market doesn't do much think, and so. they're they are then not able to contribute to their future yes. and so we still have women living below the poverty line it's a lot of women who are re able to receive GIS thank goodness that we have programs like that 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 we introduced so that we would be there to give people a hand up when they needed it and when we brought it in, it was fine, but today that, that $18,000 a year, $15,000 a year is just not enough for people to live on. And so I think what we need to do, I mean, you remember liberals brought in under the CPP the seven-year child-rearing dropout where mm -hmm. women could go in and out of the labor force and not you lose their CPP contributions because they had children, and that was that sort of equivalent of seven years. But that's not valid anymore because women are having to look after their parents. I mean, women are in the sandwich generation. They're having to take time off to do compassionate care, to look after parents, to look after disabled kids, to look after kids. We have a lot of people who have autistic children. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a huge problem for women, and I think that we need to think about policies that would address this dropping in and out of work that women have to do so that they're not penalized at the end of their lives. And so I think that that's an issue that, as we, we studied it, and it really showed how, even though women are equal under the law that there are some very real things that women uh, have to contend with and, and, and because we live longer it's a problem. I just wanted to go back a little bit to bankruptcy because I think a lot of Canadians think that they are protected. And, and I think we, we should discuss a little bit and maybe I'm going to ask you the question, what is it you feel we need to do? Uh, first and foremost, we're not protected. And, and why are we not protected and what can we do to protect? Well, I think the, um, the issue that we've been pressing the current government on is to amend the Bankruptcy Act to move pensioners or uh, employees up into the secured category. It's not up into the top category, banks are in the top category, into a secured category uh, that would certainly do more to protect those pensions. Changes to require them to be fully funded uh, not having contribution holidays, 
things that uh, companies can do. Well, if they take a contribution holiday and, uh, then, and they turn around and end up in financial trouble, part of that is that they haven't been contributing their amount to their pension. So protecting those pensions, I believe, is critical. It's something that um, our party and Mr. Ignatieff has indicated would be a priority for us. Uh, but frankly, we're not waiting because we feel it's very urgent. One, we're trying through Bill S S216, which Senator Eglinton has. And second to that, uh, we're asking questions of the government every day to try to get them to say, this is a serious problem today. Let's amend yeah. the Bankruptcy Act so we protect. We may not be able to help Nortel because it may not be in time. But there are other companies, Abbott um, Bowwater, uh, their employees are having lots of problems. There's lots of other companies yeah. that don't have the profile of some yes. of these other ones that are going bankrupt. So we're acting with an urgency to the government to try to get them to make those changes as soon as possible. Well, when you're 70, waiting four years, which we have been, people have been doing right now for this mm -hmm. government to deal with the issue, that's a long time. Exactly. You you know? Imagine if you know you've been contributing to a pension uh, for 30 years. You've already you've you just turned 65, you're taking it and your, your estimated income is $4,000 a month and you're, you're feeling very good and all of a sudden your company goes bankrupt and that's going to affect the, uh, the pension that you have. And, and it's, it's grossly unfair and I think people look at their governments for leadership and to put policies in place that protect their investments and help them while they work towards the uh, As opposed future. to this government saying, don't look at me, it's not my problem, it's provinces. Exactly. Well, and this that. passing of the buck is something that has to stop because Canadians don't care. When Canadi Canadians expect that when they pay taxes for government to be able to have the kind of ability to help them down the road when they're in trouble over the periods of time they're having difficulty, they pay taxes to provinces and they pay taxes to the federal government and, they will, and to municipalities yes. and all of these they, they don't care who they pay taxes to, they just want it. They're paying it because they expect that there would be something there for them, some safety net when they get into trouble. Uh, and, and they don't really care who whose exactly. business it is, they just want something to be done. And but I think that's a huge problem. I think it raises the role of the government and what, what do people expect the government to do. And I think they expect their government to put in policies that protect their own investments when they're saving for the future. We've got an aging population. Uh, if we don't make changes now that will enable people and assist people to be able to save in a, in a reasonable way, uh, we're not going to, the taxpayers are not going to be able to afford it with the aging population. Uh, we're talking about seniors not getting enough today. Yes. If we don't do some, make some changes to our current saving system, our, our income tax regulations and so on, uh, we're going to have a huge amount of people that get to be 65 and living less than that. And on that note, Judy, I want to thank you so much for coming. It was very interesting. I think we could speak for two hours on this <laughs> issue. And I want to thank you all for listening. And I hope we shed some light. And I hope you realize how much we believe we need to do something about this issue now.